All right guys, Old Jack here, aka Blender Ninja. Right, today we're gonna to be doing a, a run cycle of a tiger in grease pencil. The version I'm using is version um, Blender 2.83 Alpha. The reason I'm using the Alpha version of uh, Blender is the grease pencil, if you're not aware of it, has been rewritten. So the, it's a lot, the, the lines, are, the strokes are so much smoother, the animation playback is so much better, and they've added a, few, a ton loads of new features, like real-time lights, etc. Um, so I would suggest, strongly suggest, if, you're, if you want to get into Grease Pencil, from now on, use 2.83 Alpha and onwards, okay? So, when you first boot up, I'm going to assume that you're very new to Grease Pencil in this tutorial. So, um, when you first boot up uh, Blender, and as, when you first boot up Blender, you're going to be faced with this uh, splash screen. Just click on 2D animation, and then click on there, and then you'll be faced with this screen here. So this is your 2D animation screen. What it's done is when you when you use the splash screen, it's, it already created a a grease pencil object, and that's your grease pencil object, which is here. It's called stroke uh, by default. We're going to change that to tiger. So just by if you want to, all you do is double click on it, and then you can change that to tiger, or you could press the F T F two button, F two, that will um, allow you to change the main object. Okay. So we've got our tiger. So the first thing we want to do is um, we're going to set it, set, set it all up for our, because it's just a simple um, animation. Let's first set up our our layers and our the, the materials that we're going to use. So let's just, uh, we're going to delete this, this, this um, icon box here, this is for our layers. You see this here, this is your layer tab. So let's just delete that, and let's just delete that. And then we're gonna add a new layer, and we're gonna double again, double click, and let's call this one, um, let's call this guides. Yeah, let's just bring this out a bit so you can uh, see what we're doing here. And then we're going to add another one. We're going to call it the next one. We're going to call it, um, let's call this pencil. Uh, and let's spell it correctly. And then one more, we're going to add this one. We're going to call this inks. I'm going to call it inks, but I'm probably not going to ink it really. I'm going to just pencil it, but just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to just call it ink. So we've got our guides, pencil, and ink. So let's go, this is, as I say, this is for your layers. This is your layer uh, level. Now, as I've explained in other tutorials, if you followed along, um, you've got your grease pencil object, and in the grease pencil object, you have, each grease pencil object is gonna have, be assigned individual layers. So every object is gonna have a different layer. Uh, have, could have a number of layers underneath it. If you're, if you're confused, I'll put a link for under, uh, my Grease Pencil Masterclass in the link below, so you can check that out if you, if you, if you find it hard to understand the, the layers. Okay, so we've got materials here. Let's just delete all these materials that come standard, because we don't need all of these. And we just go, let's create uh, three of them. Um, no, let's just create two. So we're gonna have one for pencil, Call this pencil, and we're gonna have a second one. We're gonna call that ink. The pencil one, because we want to kind of uh, follow the masters of of uh, animation. We're gonna make it a blue, a blue stroke. You don't have to have it blue, but just to make it kind of easier, we're gonna have a blue pencil stroke. Um, So we've got a pencil and we've got ink. So that's all we've got. So we've got a pencil and our ink. 
and this is on our material. Don't confuse your materials with your layers, yeah? Even though they're separate. So we've got, this is on our layers and this is on our materials, okay. So if you notice, we've got this uh, white uh, canvas. My, what I'm gonna do on here, it's up to you if you wanna do this, but I don't particularly wanna look at a white screen all the time. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just change that uh, canvas background so that um, so that the background is is not how do you put it um, kind of eye eye friendly. So I'll click on here and let's just change the the background so that it's kind of eye friendly. So you've done that. The other thing you can do. Is which would be which is a, another useful thing is what I've done is I've gone to my edit preferences and then you can change the if you're if you're if these icons are too small you can change the icons to uh, make them slightly bigger or slightly smaller depending on your preference I I, I think I, I have it quite high so that it's just easier for, to, to deal with with your eyes. Okay, so we've, we've done that. So the other thing we wanna do, so we've got our our layers sorted out, our materials sorted out. I know it sounds a bit of a, a bit of a, you're messing about a bit, but once you've set it up, you can then save the preferences for every time you boot up Blender. And how you do that, you'd go uh, file um, defaults, and then save style file. And then everything you've set up, every time you boot up Blender, it would be set up for every time you use it. But I've got it all set up for, for my my setup, but because I'm trying to do this tutorial, I'm, I'm doing it as if um, basically setting it up from scratch for you guys. So right, the next thing we wanna do is, you see this icon here? This is your, um, your, your number of frames. So you've got start and then you've got the end. Because our animation is basically a six frame a run cycle, we want, uh, you have a guess, six frames. So we'll just go six here. And then we've got six. Now what, I've, what I usually do is you can scroll using this bar here, but I, I don't, I, there's no need for it. Use your mouse um, and you can just scroll using the middle mouse button to, to move it back and forward. That's using the middle mouse button and then zoom in with your middle mouse button and then you can open it, you can scale it up to your six frames. You see the, the, the brighter frames, these are your active frames. So one to six are your active. So you can just zoom in and zoom out with your middle middle mouse button. Now I am actually using a, uh, a pen tablet. I'm gonna be doing this um, to drawing with a pen tablet. However, right, what I will say to you, if you haven't got a pen tablet, don't just give up and say, oh, I can't do this. Basically, I know it's gonna be a lot winded, but my suggestion is um, you can maybe purchase some animation paper. And even if you used to just hole punch it with a peg bar, there's two tools out there on cheap man's DIY on your know, animating kit. And you can just draw the frames that you need and scan it in and scan it into to blend. Okay, it's a bit of a nightmare. But if you remember the great animators, the guys at Disney who created Fantasia, Pinocchio, they never had a pen tablet. So don't let that put you off becoming a great animator. Eventually, if you, you, you really seriously become an animator or a great artist, all these things will come to you because you, you, you're gonna be proving your worth as an artist. And because and your talent will come through, um, you will make that money. So don't let not having a pen tablet put you off becoming an animator. Right, okay. So we've got our six frames. So we go to our our layers. So the first layer we wanna deal with is guides. So let's just, we can just click these two off. And now we've just got the guides highlighted. Yeah, let me just click on guides and that's highlighted. Go to frame one. And we're gonna click on guides here. And then we go to parallel. And all we're gonna do is just, just draw a, um, a simple line. This is just basically the floor. 
So that's that's the the guides for the the floor. Let's just make it okay. So that's our floor. That 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 is literally um, all we're gonna do for our guides. The next thing we want to do is we're gonna go to our pencil. So we we'll turn off lock the guides now. Put pencil. Change the material for our pencil. Lock that guides off. And now we're using our blue pencil. So for the, for the very first frame for our, our tiger, when you're doing that animation, my my suggestion is, um, let's just uh, make sure, let's put this one up the top. When you're doing the pencil, um, your rough strokes, is you don't have to, you don't, how do you put it? First of all, getting a good reference. I'm using a reference from a uh, animation book called um, Preston Blair's um, Cartoon Animation by Preston Blair. I think it's one of the best animation books out there. I would highly recommend that you purchase it if you're serious about becoming an animator. I'll put a link below again uh, for this book. So reference is very important. So having good reference, you know, you don't have to have a book for reference. You can use video footage or whatever. Don't be shy of using video footage for your your animations, or even that, you know, you want to copy uh, an animation from one of your manga project or you know one of your your projects that films that you really love or whatever. Don't be shy of setting it setting up your system for for using reference the, the great Disney animators they should do it all the time they used to have they used to film actors and act out the roles and the Disney animators themselves they act out the roles so you act out they could film themselves acting out the roles so part of becoming a good animator is not being shy of filming yourself and copying uh, movements to get it right so don't be shy of that okay so the first thing we want to do is just do a rough out uh, of the animation uh, of your very first frame. So we're going to start with that now. So the first thing you want to do is also also think about your um, thing called uh, your gesture lines. So you get your gesture lines right first, the, the flow of the movement. So turn off guides. So that's a nice flow of movement. I press the F key. If you press the F key, you can zoom. You can make your. If you're using a pen tablet, you can make your. Um, your brush bigger or smaller. So F key makes you get your brush key bigger or smaller. So I'm gonna just move this uh, down a bit, this first stroke. Okay, so that's your, your 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 gesture flow. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm not always gonna talk because uh, I'm gonna try and uh, concentrate a bit. So that's the the back leg. So you don't have to at the moment. You don't have to worry so much about getting the finer details. You're just roughing it out. It's just called, you're basically just roughing out your, your animation. What I'm doing at the moment is also working out where the bones are. when you want to move your object up you just go to edit mode 
and then you can have these set up. Now what I've done, what I have done is I've set up quick favorites for all of these, these buttons, but I'm not using them here for this tutorial because I just want to make it easier for you to, to, to follow along. But I think it's imperative that you to get the flow move going is you set your quick favorites up. But I won't go into that at the moment because I'm just trying to give you the, you know, the showing you how to do stuff in this tutorial. But I will show you how to set up quick favorites. It's very easy. How you do that is you would if you want to set up a quick favorite for something, you just go um, you right click on the object and go add to quick favorites. And then you your you could your your quick favorites would be the Q key. So if I went to this and I add to quick favorites and I press the Q key, it would go draw. And then if I again with the eraser, if I right click and go add to quick favorites, and then I press the Q key, and then I've got erase there. So that's a really good feature. And I, I would highly strongly suggest that you you start using your quick favorites. Um, the other thing I would say is you would you would set up your key maps. Again, you could set up your key maps and preferences, and then you would set your key maps for not just in one area of your keyboard. So it's very easy to, to deal with. Um, the whole point with animation is about your flow. You wanna, you don't wanna start getting all technical. You wanna be able to keep using, you know, moving, doing stuff very quickly and flow, not getting too technical. So setting up your key maps, setting up your, your, your um, quick favorites is imperative to get your, your workflow locked down. Okay. So at the moment we've got our uh, the the rough um, shape. So let's just uh, add add his head as well. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about it if it's not perfect at this stage. Another thing I would suggest is always number your frames. I know you've got it numbered here, but if you number your frames, it just makes life easier. So that's your that's frame one. So if we go to the frame two, now when you go to frame two, you go, hang on, I've moved to frame two, but it's, I'm still seeing that, um, that object. That's not a problem. When you draw a line here, it would disappear. But you want you don't want it to be totally disappear. You want onion skinning to be on. So what you want to do is you click on this icon here, and then this allows your onion skinning uh, setup to be on. So you want you want to make sure that this is on for your onion skinning. If, for example, you you press that and you go, hang on a minute, um, my onion skinning is not showing. The chances are this one of these you're not on this middle icon here up here. You're probably on one of uh, these ones. And if you're on that one, your your onion skinning doesn't show. But if you're on this one, it does. So sometimes you go, oh, hang on a minute, I've set up all my onion skin and it's not there. So make sure that you're on the middle one and you, you see your onion skinning. Right, so when we're dealing with onion skinning, onion skinning, if you're very, very new to it, I'm talking as if everybody knows what onion skinning is. If you're very new to onion skinning, onion skinning is basically just like having a light box. Um, so that you can see what's behind your frame before. So in the traditional animation, they would have a light box normally, and they'd put your one picture on, on your, your frame, your, your bit of paper on, on a frame, and then another picture underneath it, and they turn on and off their light box so they can see the, the picture under below it. So it just makes your animation process so much easier. So um, with digital animation is exactly the same, but we've got uh, we've got a, a, a inbuilt light box. So to see our light box, we've got this onion skin in here, and then you've got your keyframe. Now, I would say the settings that you want to set up is just have it for all types. So go keyframes all types, and then you can and keyframes before just have it on keyframes before one. Obviously you can change it to after, but before, this is a good setup. Keyframes one, keep everything else default. So that's a good setup. So now that's fine. 
So let's go on to, for our second uh, frame of our animation. So we've got him uh, just hitting the ground. So we're gonna just um, do our next animation here. He's a bit lower than on this on this point here. And he's the line of motion is it's a bit more scrumped up. So we've got our two frames now. So I say, don't worry about it so much if it's not perfect, it doesn't have to be. That's, that's, uh... The other thing, when you're erasing, my, my suggestion is don't use dissolve, use stroke. Stroke will erase the whole of the stroke. It's a lot, it makes make your, 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 your speed fall a lot quicker. So, so let's say use stroke um, for your eraser and it erases the whole stroke. Because using dissolve, it just slows things down. So I'll show you if we go dissolve now, we've got, a, it's like a proper rubber, but stroke is so much easier, better to use. Okay, so we've got our two frames. Let's delete that line here as well. So we've got one, two, and let's go to our three, third one. So again, we're talking about the line of motion. Let's get the, the line of motion nice, nice and right first. Now you can, if you if you're getting a bit confused with your line, and you want to say, for example, you want to um, see the your drawing a little bit clearer without seeing the, the onion skin, and it's very simple. You just click on there, and you can turn it on and off, so you can see your your 
your drawings without the onion skin. You don't always have to have your onion skin on. You turn it on and off for when you need it on and off. You know, you you, you remember you are the master of this. You control what you want to do. It's meant to be make, making life comfortable for you. So that's so now we've, we've done three frames. So we're now on to our full frame. Remember, as I say to you, always try and get in the habit of drawing your frames. Trust me, it just makes life a lot easier. So we've got three frames here. Let's go on to the fourth one, which is kind of the, the tiger kind of launching, launching off now. Again, let's get the, that nice uh, gesture or line of action drawing sorted out. Get that nice line. So say at this stage you don't you're not worrying about detail. We're just we're just trying to get the the nice flow of movement. The next one is he's in the air, he's in the, he's in the air. So we want him slightly higher up than all other drawings as well. And as I say, get that nice flow. See, so understanding, uh, understanding the the anatomy of whatever character you're drawing even for simple stuff makes 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 your animation flow so much better so understanding anatomy is a is a it's a good it's an important uh, an integral part of becoming a great animator now, i'm not a great animator yet but i intend to be god willing i just feel that um Grease pencil will allow us to do some really great stuff mixed with 2D and 3D animation. I just feel that this is going to be industry standard soon. Um, Grease uh, Blender 2.83 is ushering a new era of um, animation. And I think uh, if we get on board now, we've got to do some great stuff. We could, we could, I, I want, what I want to do is I want to get into more of the, getting back to old school animation, you know, the, the stuff that they did like Fantasia and Pinocchio and all, I just, I want to get into that stuff, that beauty of animation, forget about rigging and all that, I just think if we can do some, we could do some really great stuff, um, for that, how do you put it? mixed with 3D so we can have 3D really cool 3D backgrounds with um, great animation you know I just I, I, I that's what I want to get into anyway so anyway we've got these five frames and the very the very first frame is basically uh, this one so we want to copy that frame and make put it there so how we do that is there's a number of ways you can do it so we've done our first, our frame one to five. Now what we want now is the very first frame on frame six. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna go to edit mode and then we're gonna highlight it 
right click, go copy, drag this right to frame six, and then go right click and paste. So now we've got frame one on frame six. Yeah, so that's that. So one to six. Let's go back to draw mode. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy with this as uh, you can scroll just using your scroll to see the animation. So because we've got the rough, we've got it roughed out in pencil now first. Let's go, now we're gonna we're gonna rough it out in in um, in our inks. But even though I say I'm gonna do it in the inks, I'm not really. I'm still gonna use pencil. I just like the feel of the pencil. So, but I'm gonna do it um, with a bit more detail now because we've got the rough shape. So I'll, I'll un unlock that and I'll change. I lock that, unlock that, put that there. So that layer is in, in on top of it. And now we're gonna just draw again, but with the, the detail. You make it make it nice. One of the things that you're gonna, which is important as a an artist is not doing chicken drawings, you know, like that, like, like, you know, try and get in the habit, I know it's hard sometimes, but get in the habit of drawing, doing stuff via strokes when possible. You know, so what we want is, uh, so as even though I'm going up here and going edit, undo, I've set up, as I said to you before, I've set up my system for um, quick deleting and all that, but for this tutorial, I've not, I've, I've dis disenabled everything, just so that you can follow along easier. So um, you, you, you should set up your. What, I, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do another tutorial at some point, showing my, my, my actual proper workflow for doing animation, so that um, you can see a nice smooth animation workflow as opposed to a kind of what do you, what do you call it crippled workflow because the way i'm doing it now is crippled because you want to you, you should be just, when you hit delete you should be deleting really quickly with your hotkeys as opposed to going up here and going undoing all that rubbish yeah so that's 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 an important thing that you want to get sorted out asap it's your hotkeys. So let's say it's all about getting your strokes nice. You ain't gonna, it might take a, a while to do your strokes. You know, sometimes your strokes. You ain't gonna get it, get it right, hit the strokes straight away all the time. You know, it takes a while. But if you get in the habit of doing it, it pays off.
if you're wondering what I'm listening to in the background, I'm listening to uh, The Hobbit. I love the soundtrack on The Hobbit. Um, the movie kind of uh, turned into a cash grab and uh, I personally believe that they uh, they made it too long. They didn't have to, it didn't, it didn't turn into The Hobbit, it turned into about three armies and all that. And uh, I, I'm not totally happy with what they did with The Hobbit. I love the books, but I wasn't totally happy with what they did with the with that franchise. But anyway, it is what it is. So I'm just doing the, 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 the rear legs now. that movement there. So that was frame six. So what I should have done really is I should have just been drawing on frame one, but it doesn't matter because all we need to do is just copy that. So if we go again, edit mode, and then we go copy move it to frame one and then just go paste. unlock these two and we'll just copy the whole make sure we're copying the whole lot let's copy that paste it make sure that I turn that off So now we're ready for the, that frame is exactly the same as that one. So now we're ready for the next um, frame. Now what I might have done, I may, I'm not sure, but I might have made a mistake as in the sense of I drew on the wrong layer, but that's not a problem. So just make sure that when you're drawing, you're drawing the correct layer. So we're just drawing that ink. So let's draw on the second, second on the ink, the ink layer. Let's draw the second frame. So as I said to you before, the, the book that I highly recommend getting, if you're a budding animator and you want to become a great animator, um, is the Preston Blair's animation, a uh, cartoon animation book. He, I think Preston Blair, from he used to work for Disney, and I think he set up his own studio at some point later. I think he's uh, passed away now, but he 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 was a great animator in his time. Um, I think he worked with the greats like Ollie Johnson, which was another great animator at Disney. Ollie Johnson, if I remember correctly, was um, if I pronounced his his name properly. Um, he worked on the Snow White stuff, the the Seven Dwarfs, and um, Fantasia as did uh, Preston Blair. But 
the thing with with uh, blender and grease pencil is I just I just got a feeling that this this program uh, let's regarding the head let's not do the head because what we can do is see that head there we can just copy that head so we're gonna do we, we won't we won't deal with the head yet we're just gonna copy that head across but not yet let's just do the body so we're gonna forget about the head for just for the time being and just deal with the body so where was I, I was gonna talk about uh, something oh uh, yeah I was gonna talk about grease pencil in the future Right, I just feel what I think is going to happen with, with grease pencil is it's going to, it, I genuinely believe it's going to be industry standard because there's nothing out there that going to be able to compete with it. I mean, I've, I've been saying, oh, maybe Toon Boom Studio is going to be able to do it, you know, compete, but it's not. It's not because the 3D, uh, the 3D effects that you're going to be able to do but will not be able that you can do in uh, Blender you ain't going to be able to do that in uh, in Toon Boom not a chance and eventually those studios are going to wake up to the fact that Blender is industry standard so if you're um, if you're a industry vet and you're using um, and you are using Toon Boom Studio I think it's going to be about time I'm going to stick with this you quote me on it it's time to start learning uh, Grease Pencil because I'm gonna I'm gonna say that all studios are gonna be using this program. I'm not saying for 3D animation, because Maya is the industry standard at the moment, and I think Maya is gonna still be industry standard for time to come. But I genuinely believe that uh, Grease Pencil is gonna be industry standard Blender for for 2D mix with 3D animation. So the thing is, you could do 2D animation, but the strength lies in mastering both of them, if you understand what I mean. If you if, we, if you learn how to use um, if you learn how to use both your 3D side and your 2D, then it's going to be great. Right, anyway, let's get back onto point. Back onto point, literally. So I've gone onto the eraser now, if you go click on, I've uh, been using stroke as an eraser, but you can use point as well when you want to just um, delete something a little bit intricate. So I'm gonna just to make. I want to just delete that. So I just use stroke here. I mean point. Yeah. And then I can just go back and then just draw that line that I wanted to go over here. Okay. So let's go, we're going back onto our we're on frame number four now. So it's kind of launching off now launching off so on that tilt so you see that that part there that's like a skeleton inside which is kind of a, a guide helps you get get it right get up there I say believability so. 
you know where the skeleton is, it's going to be a lot easier. See that skeleton there, you know where it is. Now, I'm going to, as, as I normally do, go off on a tangent or get a bit controversial. But I've got an issue with... Uh, let's erase that a minute. I'm not happy with that. It's too close up to this wall. Too bunched up. Um, yeah, I've got an issue with uh, rigging. 2D animation rigging. 2D animation rigging, to me, is like, how do you put it? It's like, um, it's like you're trying to find a quick cheat, or, it's, or you're getting, you're trying to find a quick way of doing something without learning the art. To me, for limited animation. Yeah, 2D. You, you say, for example, you're doing a Rick and Morty style of project, then the Rick and Morty style of project works for limited, you know, rigging type animations, etc. Because it's, it's, how do you put it, it's character driven. It's, it's story content driven. As in, what I'm trying to say is the, the dialogue drives the story, not the, how do you put it, Not the, oh, that's wrong, isn't it? Not the, maybe if I wasn't talking so much. Um, the, the comedy drives the, the project. So the animation could be substandard, subpar, and no one's going to be that bothered. They, they just love the comedy. But just imagine that Rick and Morty style of, of animation, but with the Disney love and care for the animation. Okay, you've got to think about the practicalities, it's about money and budget. But this is the problem. I just thought everybody's about, it's all about money and the, the art always takes a back seat. And it would be great if, if it didn't always take the back seat. You know, that's what I want to I wanna strive for. So I, I'm not a big fan of uh, rigging, character rigging and all that, especially for 2D stuff. With, okay, with 3D stuff, it's a necessary evil. You can understand you've got to rig a 3D character. But for uh, 2D stuff, what about... Uh, doing great animation as opposed to just banging it out you know just to, to save a few bucks so you say I've left the face a bit because I'm, there's a re I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with that so we've got we've done frame number four now and let's move on to frame five so say he's in the air now which is quite an easy one to do. And to say it's a lot easier for me to do this than probably for you because I've got the reference right here with me. You know. And you you, you haven't. I was gonna say it sucks to be you, doesn't it? But that's not very nice, is it? Yeah, well I am old Jack the bastard, don't I? So I can be a bit of a bastard. But really I'm not a bastard, I'm really a nice person, apparently. Don't know. There could be. So I've got some ex-girlfriends who, who might disagree with that. But let's not go there. Let's not. Let's not. Let's not. Do, let's not do a deep dive onto my ex-girlfriends. Right. So say, see that skeleton there? That's a nice skeleton point. There. I hate doing this way. I prefer having it with my setup because it just makes the flow so much easier. Because animation is about flow. You get that flow right. You get your feeling it. You know, it's like it's like karate. Getting the flow of it. I'm 
not totally happy with this one. The line size is probably out. So it's only a quick out. I don't want to get make it. It's not going to be perfect. This. As long as it's half decent, so it gives you a few. tips let's go back to that frame we've never done the so we've done the, the second leg on that one let's do the second leg on this one So right, we've got that. It's looking, it's not looking that bad. So when I was talking about that, that head, we're gonna just copy that head. What we're gonna do now is go edit mode. And we're gonna just copy that head. Zoom in a little bit more. Let's use uh, this icon here. Doesn't matter if we copy more than what we need. That do, and then we just go. Let's copy that, and then we're gonna paste it. And the reason why I've done it like that is now we can just move it position that we want. So if you look on this head here, it's kind of down you can be slightly remove that down a bit position it here and then we can rotate it slightly using a rotation rotate it down a bit and then, then do another paste there again move it down a bit Kind of looking up now a bit. We'll clean it up afterwards. We don't need to worry about it, the detail yet. As long as you're getting the rough shape. And you see he's looking up again. So let's paste that again. But this time he's, he's really looking up towards where he's jumping. So let's do another rotate. He's in the air now. Let's do another paste. Clean it up. It just, when it comes to this, it's just, the more you do it, you get into the flow of it and it becomes easier to deal with. I, I do understand that, you know, how do you put it? 
if you're coming at this from a, um, you know, there's 2D programs are going to be very a lot easier to, to, to deal with than Grease Pencil. I agree with you. They're going to be easier programs out there. But there's going to be none that's going to be as powerful as this. So, uh, you know, get in there. Get it. Don't be scared of learning. Learning something new that could, you know, m once you get the hang of it, could potentially m make your projects a lot better. Okay, so we've got all that. Let's just go back to draw mode now. And let's do a bit of clean up. So I'm quite happy with that now. So let's just clean up some of these lines. That one looks okay-ish. See that line there? We'll get rid of that. It's a bit of a mess, this one. It doesn't matter. Let's clean this one up. So it's really messy, isn't it? Let's see what we can do with this, this mess. Yeah, I kind of made a bit of a hash on this number, frame number four, but I'm confident I can pull it, pull it out of the fire. Because I am that guy that can. Maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, that's all right, I do. I'll tell you one of the reasons why it's probably a bit more messy is let's just deal with let's just do a bit of shading on these. On these uh, these parts of the leg, I think it read a bit better if you can see the shading on it. Again, I'm not trying to do anything perfect. I'm just trying to hopefully give you guys a few uh, give you guys a few uh, tips and put you on the correct path for your animation and I'm not perfect either so if you see workflow or something I'm doing that could be done easier or better put a, put a, a polite um, message in the in the in the comment section because I want to improve as well and I don't I'm not perfect, you know, I want to get better and the way I'll get better is if, if I don't, if I listen to you guys as well, you know, so if you see something that like I flaw, something that I could do better, then just, yeah, put a polite, a polite link and say, look, lad. If you did this a bit different, it's gonna make make it better. You know. And there's nothing wrong with being polite in a in a message. Some people, because you're on the internet, some people can be a bit rude. But there's no need for it. Life's too short. You just be polite, be nice, be cool. Being cool is good. You know, I'll try and get on with everyone. Don't need to be a dickhead. I've noticed a lot of people kind of dickheads, but they won't be dickhead in uh, in person with you, you know. So it's better to be, it's, you know, life is short, so why not get on with people? Why not be cool? 
you don't want to get stressed out and start arguing over something silly like animation or some other things you just be cool man Right, so we've got our six frames. So I'm quite, I'm, it's not the best animation ever. It's not gonna win any awards this one. So just quickly, just quickly banged it out. So the next thing, so we've got our six frames. We can see roughly that it looks okay. So, right, I'm gonna go into it, get a little bit uh, technical a bit. In animation, you've got um, the traditional animators, they've got 24 frames per second. Or they shoot on singles and two, uh, they call it singles shooting on singles or doubles. Now, usually uh, you can get away with shooting. Most animators, they shoot on doubles. So if there's 24 frames in a second, they would draw 12 single individual pictures for those 24 frames in a second. Now, I've drawn six here. Now, I'm going to shoot this on doubles. So when I say shoot on doubles, there's going to be a spacing of, this is actually like be shot on, on singles. So if I was to play this now, it would go through really fast. And it won't read that well, it's just too fast. So if I was to make this into shot on doubles, so double exposure in, in a way, is if I just click on all these and then go scale, press S key for scale, make sure that this icon here, this drag icon is right at the front here, press the S key and then scale it. Hang on, let's just move this up to 12. Now let's move up to 11 because we're going to skip a frame. I'll, I'll show you what I'm trying to do anyway. And then we go to um, press the S key and let's scale this up to a, uh, up to 11. So you've got a gap in between. So you've got, see that? So it's two. So you've got a gap in between each one of two, one empty frame here, one empty frame here, one empty frame one. Make sure it's one empty on each one, yeah? And now, if we then play this animation, it plays a lot smoother, you see that? But what's happening now, it's repeating that one frame double and we don't want that see that that frame here is exactly the same as that frame here so we don't really want that so let's just delete that frame here and then we go one to nine and now if we play it, it should do, hopefully be very smooth see that so obviously you can to clean it up, you would you could do add more in betweens and make it smoother, etc. Um, you know, because usually you when it, and you can have it more floaty in the air by adding in betweens, or when it lands slow up, so you'd add more in and in between. But it's just to get you started a rough flow. And obviously, this is only a pencil animation. Um, it's not anything amazing but the key with uh, grease pencils is that, that uh, uh, the ability to do 3d animation and i think the strength is when you incorporate a scene with 3d and that's when it will when grease pencil will will will, will show it that it, it's more advanced than anything out there okay it's old jack ak Blender Ninja, um, signing off. Hope you guys have learned something. Remember to smash up that um, subscribe button. Um, hit notification for when I do new, new tutorials. And I'm out. Laters.